Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two different landing weights. Uh, this, we're going to use the landing weight that the aircraft can max itself out for, and we're going to use the landing weight that is a little bit more recommended. Now, landing weight is an interesting concept. Uh, when I was originally first learning to fly, none of the planes that ever took off ever had a landing weight. Um, whatever you took off with was what you could safely land with. Once you start moving to larger and larger airplanes, like our longitude that we have here, the weight that you land has a profound impact on the landing itself. And in this video, we're going to basically be taking a look at that and uh, kind of exploring just how tricky it becomes. So what we have is a longitude today, which is an absolutely fantastic little airplane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and really weigh this plane down. I'm going to fill it up with all sorts of people in the passengers. I'm going to carry a full tank of gas. And uh, we're going to go ahead and execute a standard takeoff here. It's going to you scream at me in a second for going too high on the red line there. But that's okay. It's got all FADEC and stuff like that. So it'll slow me down nicely. So of course, that maximum uh, gross weight here, uh, it's going to take us a minute to get in the air, but it's okay because I'm still safe. There's actually some aircraft that have a basically a ramp weight and then they have a takeoff weight and those two numbers are actually different from each other. It's just kind of one of those interesting little things that you see. So it's going to take us a little while to get this thing in the air, but that's okay. Like I said, we're longitude. We'll get going when we're ready to get going. All right, bring that nose up. It's going to get in the air when it's ready to get in the air. Go ahead and fling up the wheels there. And I'm just going to enjoy a nice gentle climb out here. <laughs> We're going to get yelled at by air traffic control in about two seconds here. It's going to be pretty embarrassing. There we go. Bring that up. Go ahead and now wham the trim. Pram. There it goes. Delightful. Now we can go ahead and reduce power a little bit. Now we don't need to be ripping along here. I think this is a perfectly applied set it to climb power. You can see I have that set over on the left. And we're just going to go ahead and execute a traffic pattern and come back in for a landing. All right. And here we are back on the other side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and land our airplane. Now, the interesting thing we have here is, as I was mentioning, we are basically carrying all of our initial weight. Well, not all of our weight, quite a bit of it, obviously. As we started to do our approach here, we started to burn off some fuel, so we're not exactly maxed out. But there's a bunch of things we want to observe uh, during my approach to landing here. Uh, keep in mind, we're not doing any instrument landings here. We're doing just a good old-fashioned... Um, I was going to say something stupid like an all-American direct landing or something like that, but I don't actually know what an all-American landing is. Tip my head down just a tiny bit so I can take a look at my instruments. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the AOAometer. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. I believe they call it an AOA indicator. And uh, we're going to use that as kind of our method of getting ourselves down to the ground nice and safely here. So right now I'm doing my deceleration phase, just trying to get down. And uh, right now I'm doing 130 knots, and I can see very clearly that uh, we're getting a little sinky here. I'll pull that nose up, I'll start to bring a little bit of power, and 130 feels pretty good. Um, this is about halfway on the AOA indicator I'm looking at to the left. We are... Uh, we're not slow, but um, not bad, not bad, not bad at all. So that's about perfect there. I'm actually going to give it just a little bit more thrust here. And a little bit of thrust, a little bit more thrust, a little bit more thrust, a lot more thrust. And you can see how my aircraft uh, really, really started getting behind the power curve there a little bit, which is a not uncommon once you start getting heavy. I'm also noticing I'm drifting a little bit to the right there. I'll go ahead and bring the nose down. That's pretty good. Again, I'm not the world's most stabilized approach for a jet aircraft, but that's okay. We're all here for demonstration anyway. We're going to get ourselves a little bit closer. This is a big old number 24. I love that big number. When I see that land out of this runway in the real world on a Cessna 172, it's a fun experience. All right, we're going to go ahead and pull the throttle back. At the same time, we're going to lift up the nose. And you can see here that we're just sort of hanging out, uh, relaxing as we come uh, rushing down the runway. We'll go ahead and settle down uh, pretty easily there. So what do we notice? Uh, one thing we notice is the fact that we hit the ground pretty hard there. Uh, we also went a little bit wide. Uh, we were at a relatively high angle of attack during our final approach there. We'll go ahead and give it full power to get us back into the air again. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is uh, when we were on approach, it was very difficult to stabilize the aircraft uh, because uh, we weighed, um, we were constantly, you know, a little bit of power then we needed a lot and then we finally the power caught in. So that sensitivity to those changes that we critically need in order to make a nice balanced stabilized approach were not in our favor. Now, of course, in the real world, if we were that heavy when we tried to land, we would run the risk of uh, basically blowing out all of our tires. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and intentionally lighten the airplane up substantially, and then we're going to fly the same approach. All right, here we are again. So what we've done, of course, is we've lightened this plane up significantly. Our original weight there was pretty heavy. We are light. Uh, we are about a third away from our max. And there's a bunch of things that are significantly different. Uh, one thing, if you remember, our previous approach speed, which was actually a little high, again, we're shooting from the hip there, was about 130 knots indicated, uh, which is 
We're moving. We're moving. Obviously, if this were a very, very long runway, uh, we'd be in a world of hurt there because of the fact that we need quite a bit more runway to land. Now, as I'm coming in for an approach here, I'm noticing a couple different things. Uh, first of all, that I'm sitting here at 112. <laughs> I think the Bonanza lands at 112 instead of, um, you know, the jet aircraft for sure. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is as I'm coming into land, I don't need to do anything with my controls. Um, I'm just stable i'm doing 110 here my aoa is a pretty good if i need to make a tiny little change in attitude like i can tell that i'm getting just a little low i can literally just pull back like a millimeter on my controls and this aircraft gently just rises right back up to where it needs to be i'm looking down there you can see my altitude is nice and stabilized my attitude my airspeed everything is ready to go now the cynical folks out there will say the reason this is happening is because of the fact that you practiced a landing a minute ago partially true uh, the key thing here though is in order to make my changes it's just a little tiny adjustment is all i need now imagine for example that you're one of the passengers on board of this aircraft right now um you would basically be just looking out the window watching me just slowly make my way down you wouldn't hear rapid engine power changes you'd just be enjoying the ride as it uh, like slowly makes its descent now i see i'm tracking high here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to back my throttle out just a little bit and let the nose come down Look at how controllable this plane is. I don't know why there's not a Vassie on the side of the runway. That's killing me just a little bit. There's supposed to be one of those. Actually, I think it's a Pappy. I'm going to go ahead and bring my nose up a little bit. That's perfect. But notice I'm able to basically lock my airspeed at the correct speed. I can start bringing it down because I'm over the fence. There's the big old number 24. I'm going to start smoothly reducing my throttle. I'm going to bring my nose up to the correct attitude for landing. And we're just going to gently come down. Oh, yes! Nice! That wasn't bad. It was a little wide, but um, it's been a while since I've uh, taken this one. Now, what I want you to see here is what was the difference in weight? So if I open this up real quickly here, man, that was great! Uh, what's the difference here? Um, we have 26 out of 39.50, so we're not quite half of our weight. We're about 40% of our weight, kind of a thing like that. And uh, of course, you're sitting here saying, well, okay, okay. But what if I were an airline or like a 747? What would happen if I tried to land when I'm over a million pounds versus when I'm 300,000 pounds. And I encourage you to find that. Uh, you've never flown a 747 that's a glider. Another thing I want to show you real quickly here as you can kind of watch me do my rollout is I have barely had to touch the brakes here. Um, like, I just, okay, I guess we'll slow down now and I'll hit the brakes gently. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? It really makes such a massive, massive difference. Uh, when you're landing, especially as your plane gets bigger and your fuel issue gets bigger, how critical of a control difference it will make for you when you're the correct weight. Enjoy.